Hi everyone, welcome back. And if you're new here to Dragonfly Bees Resale Journey, my name is Susie. My channel is essentially about sharing and showcasing my experiences sourcing inventory, focused more so on jewelry. I do unboxings of um, mystery jewelry lots. I share fun jewelry facts, how-to videos at times, and also Big Apple sites. So yes, I'm in New York. And speaking about New York, I love coming across vintage jewelry or even modern jewelry, current jewelry brands that got their start in New York City. There's, there's so many. This video is informational, educational, and it's about different vintage jewelry I came, I came across. Um, let's see, not all of them originated here in New York, but most are. And um, if you like this type of content, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Ring that bell to choose all notifications to be alerted for upcoming new content. And um, we'll begin with this necklace. So this beautiful necklace is by Duville. Now, Duville is actually a resort town in uh, northwestern uh, France. It's also known as the Parisian Riviera because of its upscale crowd. It's about, let's see, two hours from Paris uh, if you drove. And um, it's also where Coco Chanel opened her first boutique in 1913. Um, besides that, this town here named Duville is also internationally known for its horse culture. They have two famous tracks and they hold annual races. But this necklace is not from France. <laughs> this necklace um, was made by a company called J.R. Wood and Sons, founded by J., uh, John. R. Wood, and they manufactured Duville jewelry in Brooklyn, New York, and they started in 1850. By um, 1919, they were recognized for their amazing skills in diamond cutting. Uh, they were known for wedding ring making, and they manufactured fine gold and platinum jewelry. In the early years, their facilities were so huge that they were uh, enough room to employ up to a thousand workers. There were even separate departments. They had one for platinum, one for mounting, uh, one for signet rings, and even a department for special order. They designed and produced every piece of jewelry you can think of bracelets, brooches, pins, lavaliers, which I love, uh, cuff buttons, cufflinks, bangles, rings, lockets, pocket watches. They used 10 karat, 14 karat, and 18 karat gold. And um, but during the, the war years, they used um, white gold and yellow gold and some with filigree designs, some with platinum, and also this type of uh, diamond called uh, Wesselton. And they also used gemstones such as rubies, sapphires, semi-precious ones, uh, amethyst, garnet, seed pearls, and the best rhinestones they can find. So this here I found so this is new old stock because this tag don't mind the train it's on a ribbon with the original foil sticker 
and it was never removed. Looking at this, it's a double strand. The back of these very ornate bars that kind of look like wings um, is marked Deville on the back of them, on, on each one, and it has this um, hook closure. This is immaculate. I love the components. They have these, um, like a champagne colored Faux pearls, I guess. Kind of marbleized. They have these beads that are, do you see that? They're translucent, but they have this foil and they're painted. And they also have this textured portion of it. You have these gold components. They're raised bead designs, very organic looking. Then they have these faceted AB coated amber tone uh, beads. The um, oh, these big beads have very pretty bead caps that kind of look like leaves. You have gold tone spacers. You have this crackled designed um, texture, like a light gold wash bead. You have rondelles that have rhinestones on them just lovely very nice i was so happy to find this and um it's already in my etsy shop <laughs> and i did find some comps on ebay and posh and they were selling it for 20, 25 dollars um but i I priced mine differently due to the fact that it's new old stock and this tag is still on it. So we have this first um, vintage brand that I want to talk about. And the brand, again, is called Duville. So I believe this necklace is probably could be from the 60s, late 50s, because in 1970, the company became part of the keepsake division of Lennox Inc. And they were located um, in Trenton, New Jersey. In 1975, the company changed its name to Art Carved Inc. Mark uh, Duville. That was quite a long name. And they also had a wedding ring division and the wedding rings were under the brand Art Carved. And today, the company is still in business. Pretty uh, amazing history. So, moving on to the next piece. All right, the next um, New York-based jewelry brand I want to talk about is Irwin Pearl. Now, this is unfortunately is the only piece I have um, in my collection for sale. This is already on Etsy as well, and uh, all the other pieces I. I no longer have in my possession. But um, Erwin was born in Austria. He grew up in the US with his uncle. After World War II, he studied jewelry. He became one of the best diamond cutters in the world. In 1957, he founded his own jewelry company. He used diamonds and pearls and precious stones Hollywood stars, artists, politicians, they wore his jewelry. Uh, his jewelry was mainly um, gold-plated at times with natural stones, and it was really the rage in the first five years in a row when he opened his brand. Uh, he also won the award in London for diamond design, um, and it was called the Diamond International Award. In 1970, he decided to produce affordable jewelry, and this is one of them. So this earring is from the 1970s because um, he called that jewelry, well, he would brand that jewelry with the PEP, and that's what you see right here, PEP with the copyright. 
So, since um, the 70s, that's the brand that was was on the jewelry. And since 83, you would see jewelry with the brand Irwin Pearl spelled out. And in 91, he had some jewelry that was branded E uh, dot Pearl. So for more than 60 years, he registered over 33 jewelry trademarks. So yeah, if you come across Irwin Pearl and you see Pep, that's from the 70s. So that's a little bit about Irwin Pearl. Next up is this necklace. This here beauty is by RJ Graziano. He is also a New York City designer. Let's see, his trademark began in 1976. And he's got a, a few trademarks. In fact, um, you'll find his jewelry marked R.J.Graziano, as well as Graziano and the initials are JG. He initially designed exclusively for Bloomingdale's, making jewelry with uh, beautiful Austrian crystals. Six months after that, Lord and Taylor placed a full page ad in the New York Times featuring him. And uh, I'm letting the train go by, <laughs> I'm sorry. And then uh, Neiman Marcus also featured him in their catalog. In 2007, he was named one of the top 10 jewelry brands in the press. And that top 10 list included David Yurman, Cartier, and even uh, Lavin, which is pretty up there. So currently his jewelry is sold today on the Home Shopping Network and on his website. So this here is, I, I think this is from the 80s. It is a beautiful statement necklace. You have these links that have that detailing on it, almost like um, what 1928 does to the back of their jewelry. You have this uh, link chain with the lobster claw. Here is the jewelry tag. One side of it is um, copyright Graziano in uppercase. And the opposite side has the initials the sirens going by now has the initials RJG. This is in beautiful condition. This here has beautiful, vivid, beautiful, vividly colored stones. They're faceted. And then looking at this uh, and, and touching them, these are not even glass. These are acrylic. So this is one of his beautiful um, costume pieces. And they're all open back, as you can see. And uh, yeah, so now you know a little bit more about R.J. Graziano. This next piece is, I guess, an exception to the rule. Um, this video is mainly about New York City-based jewelry brands. But I wanted to bring this one up because... Um, it's in a league of its own. Um, this one is basically not a New York City brand. In fact, it is um, a Massachusetts brand. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this because this is a brand that you rarely, rarely find. And it's called Sturdy. S-T-U-R-D-Y. And... The Sturdy family is a very, very prominent family in Massachusetts, in Attleboro Falls. And they have this amazing genealogy of the family uh, lineage. And they did have a jewelry uh, business, but they were also politicians and they were also into many, many other trades. And this one is one of the sons, and I'm going to call him John F. Sturdy, because this company is John F. Sturdy's 
Sons Company. That's the actual name of the company. Uh, when he turned his business over to his three sons. This company was established in 1865. He turned over the business to his three sons in 1892. They're really known for manufacturing jewelry and chains, as well as bracelets. This here, I believe, is from the 40s. It is marked right here. It's really very small, but it is marked right there, sturdy in uppercase and also 120th 12 karat gold filled. Um, really beautiful. I would say maybe Art Deco style uh, chain with these beads that are open on the opposite end. And then you have these rings with these beautiful red crystal rhinestones. Um, so yeah, this was a really amazing find look at the type of closure it has it has that type of spring ring where there is no tab on it you need to push that I don't know if you can see that let me grab my magnifier there that type of clasp and let's see it's actually marked and signed on this particular on this jump ring that is attached to that. Uh, I guess I would call that a spring ring. The chain is really, really nice. You can't really see because of it's so delicate. But those little links that connect. Um, well, those little connectors that connect links are actually detailed with the tiny little rib design. And you have this hanging off the bottom. Oop, knocked the camera. Excuse me. And these are not prong set, but they are faceted and they are um, bezeled. There's the back of it. And I believe I purchased this from a another YouTube reseller uh, some time ago. And I actually never really looked at it until recently. So yeah, I wanted to add this to the mix. And next we'll identify some brands that you may be aware of and let you know when they were established in New York City. Next up is a list of jewelry brands that got their start here in New York City and I listed them in chronological order so the first ones I have listed are from the 1800s. In 1837 Tiffany and Company was born here in Brooklyn, New York. In 1850, as you know, Irwin Pearl in Manhattan. 1868, you may run across a brand called Lusterne, and they started in New York City as well. In 1880s, uh, there was Richelieu, and they were uh, started in Brooklyn, New York. In 1892, Siner or Sinner, hmm, not too sure on the pronunciation, but they started in New York City. Moving on to the 1900s, well, actually 1901 to the 20s, we start off with Coro, who began in 1901. And then Lisner started in 1904. In 1910, there was a company by the name of Clyde Dunier, in fact, I do, uh, well, I had a necklace by him, and that sold on, I believe it was Poshmark. And then in 1926, one of my favorite brands is Miriam Haskell. So moving on to the 40s, we have Selro and Cellini. And uh, 
Van S. In 1942, there was a company called Ellen Designs. In 1946, Winart. And in the late 40s,、uh, Art. So each one of these brands,、uh, I actually have jewelry listed under these brands in my Etsy shop. So let's hope they do well. So moving on to the 60s. To the 80s, these names I'm sure you've heard of. In 1963, Kenneth J. Lane came into play. In 76, R.J. Graziano, which you had s a w before. 1980, David u r b a n came on the scene. And yes, each one of these started off in New York City. 1980s, we had Ben Amun. And then we also have Michael Golan in 1982. Moving on to more modern, I guess, or current jewelry brands that started here in New York City. We have Alexis b i t a r He started off in Brooklyn, New York, and is still in Brooklyn in、um, 1990. In 96, David Aubrey, who's actually、um, a woman founder, but named her company David Aubrey. You may come across a brand called Lee Angel that started here in 97. And then Jamie Rocks. She started in 2013, but I believe she moved her company to Florida. So, in addition to the jewelry brands that I've listed, I also want to talk about these iconic New York based brands that we all know and love.、Uh, they're known for their clothing, their footwear, their accessories, their perfumes, so many other types of merchandise that they provide. In、um, 1967, we start off with Ralph Lauren, who began by selling men's ties. In 1968, Calvin Klein sold his designs,、uh, coat designs, in the York Hotel. In 1984, Donna Karen, who was working for Ann Klein at that time, left Ann Klein and opened up her own brand. So, amazing startup stories, amazing history. I hope you、um, learned some. New brands by watching this, and I thank you for taking time to watch this. And if you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up, comment below, tell me what your thoughts are, and if I should continue doing things like this. And、uh, I will see you really soon. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and ring that bell. Choose all notifications so you'll be alerted when I post new content. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you. Bye.